Hello guys and welcome back to my channel interview with Bunny. And today's problem statement is low level designing of the hotel booking system. Which means that we have to create a low level designing of a particular system which will help us in booking the rooms for a particular hotel. So in our previous video we have discussed in detail the low level designing of the flight booking system and the car rental system. So if you have not gone through that video till yet I would highly recommend you to go through those videos first and then come back to this video because on those videos I have told you in detail that how you should handle a low level designing problem and how you should solve a designing question during your interview. So without repeating those things further, let's start with designing the hotel booking system over here. So as you know, this will basically a clone of the Make My Trip or the Go iVivo booking site. So if I just go to the Make My Trip site over here, here you can see we have a tab called as Hotel for the hotel booking system where a user can select a particular location where he want to select the booking and thereafter he have to skip the specific date for which he want to stay over there. And based on those criteria, once the user click on search, it will list down top available hotels on those locations. Also specifying the ratings, the rates and all the categories of room available on that hotel. For example, over here we have a deluxe room, here we have an executive room and so on. And here you can see based on all this description, if the user is happy with the room, the user will select this room for booking and he will proceed with the payment and the rest of the stuff. And exactly this is what we have to also design in our object oriented low level designing problem. So without wasting much time, let's start with designing this system. So as I've already told you in my earlier video that in a system design interview, you have to constantly ask questions to the interviewer and based on the discussion with the interviewer, you have to design your system accordingly. So let's first see that what can be the exact requirement for this hotel booking application. And as you know, requirement can be of two categories. One is a functional requirement and another is a non-functional requirement. So let's first see what can be the functional requirement of our system. So the first general functional requirement of our application is the user should be able to sign in into our application. Because obviously without a particular user signing into our application, he cannot book a particular room in a hotel. So here the first requirement would be Would be users should be able to create an account in your application. So as we have seen in the Make My Trip app, for a booking a hotel, the first thing that user does is he specify the location where he want to stay, as well as he give the timestamp or the duration of how long he want to stay over there. So we will be also doing the same thing over here. So our application should have a search functionality where users should able to list down all the rooms based on the date and location. The next important thing into our requirement is, as you have seen, once the user select a particular hotel based on the price and all the ratings, he have to select a particular room which suits the best for him. For example, a deluxe room, a executive or a premium room, whatever he feels like. So here the next requirement would be, user should have the provision to select a particular room. And once he selects a particular room, the next step is he have to make the payment and confirm the booking for himself. So the next primary functional requirement for this hotel management system is the user should be able to make the payment. And once the user makes the payment, it is the responsibility for the application to give the confirmation and the notification to the user. So our application should have the mechanism to give the confirmation and the notification to the user that his room was successfully booked. So the last and the final requirement would be confirmation and notification. So here you can see I have listed down this six primary functional requirement for our hotel booking application. There can be many more functional requirements if you want to design but since there is a very limited time during the interview, it is highly recommended that you should stick with the main and the primary functional requirement for a particular given system. So here also we will stick with these six points that we have mentioned at the very beginning and based on this functional requirement, we will be designing our system. Now since we are done with the functional requirement, let's now list down the non-functional requirement of this system. So as you know, the non-functional requirement is quite simple. So the most common non-functional requirement is our application should be designed in such a way 
that it should be scalable, reliable, and easily available to the system so that there should be no downtime for our application. So the two non-functional requirements should be number one and number two, our application should be easily available and reliable. So here you can see before designing the system, how we have listed down all the requirements for designing the system. And remember, this is the crucial part for the system designing, that is to gather the requirement from the interviewer. Now let's deep dive into the solution of this problem based on this requirement. So here the first thing that we have to do is we have to find out the main actors for our system. And as you know, the actor for this application are the hotel managers, means the operator who will be listing their hotels and the user who will be booking the hotels. So our two actors will be the operators and number two, the customer. Now, since we have identified the function requirement, the non-function requirement, as well as the actor, let's now start with designing the low-level designing of our application. And if you have remembered from my earlier video, I have already told you that before writing down the class diagram of each and every component, we have to first identify the main entity associated with our application. And here, let's first list down all the main entities for our applications. So the first entity that I see over here will be the user entity. Number two, the hotels for which we are making this application. Number three, in each and every hotel, there should be rooms available for the user. So the next entity would be the rooms within the hotel. Now, if you think logically, this hotel must be present somewhere in the country. So there should be a specific location associated with each and every hotel. So there will be another entity called as location. And once we are done with defining all the hotels and the rooms within a particular hotel, next thing is like, once the user select a particular room from a particular hotel, we have to place an order for booking the room. So there would be another entity within our application and that is the order entity which will manage all the orders within our application. And once the order has been successfully placed, there should be a payment gateway by which we should take the money from the user and there should be a notification server associated with it which will give a confirmation about the status of the booking. So if you see primarily these seven are the most critical entity associated within our application. Now let's see how we will design this system and how we will create a relationship between all this entity and how we can create a complete low level designing of our application. So let's start with the first entity class and that is the hotel, which is the primary entity of our hotel booking application. Now, since we are designing the class diagram of our first entity hotel, let's first identify that what are the attributes that should be present in a hotel that we should mention in our low level design. So the first thing that should be there in a hotel is the name of the hotel. So here that will be in the type of a string. The next thing that should be there is a hotel should be having a unique identifier that is a unique ID. So let's name that as unique hotel ID. Now the next thing what we have to do is the address of the hotel because obviously address is also an attribute of a particular hotel because without that attribute we cannot specify that at which location the hotel is present and without that address we cannot filter out on the hotels based on the specific address specified by the user. So here the another attribute that will be associated with this hotel entity then that is the address. Now since we have identified a particular hotel, let's see what are the other attributes that we can include. So another important attribute for a particular hotel is the rooms. So obviously a hotel can have multiple rooms within each system. So here we will be taking an array list of all the rooms associated within a particular room. Along with all these things, you can also add few more details like rating and the review of a particular hotel. So for that, what I will be doing, I will be taking a double variable for the rating and I will be taking a list of all the comments as a part of the review system. So here you can see these are the list of attributes that should be there in this entity class called as hotel. So this will be our first entity class called as hotel. Now let's see how we can drill down this hotel class into further entity. Now what we have to do, first thing first, we have to create another entity class from here and that is the address class. So, so we will create another class and this address class will keep enter address of the hotel 
means the latitude, longitude, the zip code and everything. So let's specify all those details over here. So these are few of the attributes that we need to describe a particular address for a particular hotel. So here you can see once we describe a hotel into our system, we can specify the corresponding detail of the address into our system. So we are done with creating a hotel into our system. Now let's define all the rooms that are available within our hotel. And for that what we will be doing, we will be creating another class called as room. Now, if you think carefully, a room can also have multiple attributes associated with it. For example, a room should have a unique identifier key, means room number 101, 102. So, a room should have a specific ID. Also, a room should be associated with a particular floor. For example, the hotel is a two-story building. So, there should be first floor, room number 101. Also, similarly, there should be second floor 101. So, there can be plenty of variation of things that can be present within a room entity. So let's figure out what are the things that we have to specify within our room entity. So the first and the foremost is we have to mention the room ID which will be the unique identifier for a particular room. And along with that each room should also have a unique hotel ID which means that based on a particular room ID we can also tell that which hotel it belongs to. So obviously there should be an association between this hotel and this room where it belongs to. I hope this is clear. Now the next thing is like each room can be classified into different types. One is a premium, one is deluxe and so on. So here we will be mentioning one more attribute called as the room type which will be another entity for our class diagram. Now the next important thing is the price of the hotel room. So here you can see based on a particular room attribute and everything we have to specify the price of a particular room. So here the price will be attribute of the room not the attribute of the hotel because all the rooms in the hotel does not have the same price rather each room should have a unique price associated with it so price will be the property of the room class now the next important thing for a particular room is the status of the room which means that the way that the room is booked available or it is under maintenance so here we will be creating another entity class called as status and that's it i think this is quite enough to describe the low level designing of our room entity class now since we have done the association of this room over here, let's now also classify this room type and the status attribute over here. So for that, here what we will be doing, here you can see room type can be only of 3 to 4 type and that is why I will not be specifying an entire class for it, rather I will be defining an enum for it. So let's specify the next attribute that is the enum room type, which will have few of the value like premier, deluxe and so on. So this also become one of the entity which is associated over here. Now let's define the last and the final entity class and that is the status entity class which will also be an enum type because here the status can be of three type that is available, booked or number three under maintenance. So here you can see how granularly we are segregating a particular class and defining different entities that are associated with around it. So another entity class that we have to define for our hotel booking application is a review section that is nothing but the list of comments. So here we will be creating another class called as comments. So the comment section will hold three attributes. Number one, the username who is posting the comment, the email ID of the username and number three, the actual comment. And thus you can see we have successfully designing the hotel part of our hotel management system. Which means that with the help of this design, we can easily list down few of the hotels and the room associated with those hotels. Now let's move to the next part and that is the user part of this hotel booking system. So the first thing first, what we have to do, we have to create the primary entity for the user class and that is the user entity. So let's write the class diagram of this user class. And as you know, a user class can have few of the attributes, the username, the email ID, the phone number and the password for a particular user. So let's define all those things in our user class. So now since we have identified a particular user entity class, let's now see what are the other necessary things that we have to mention in our system. Now if you look carefully, you can see we have both the user as well as the hotel into our system. 
Now the only pending thing is like booking a particular room based on some criteria. So we have to specify two more important class within our system. Number one, the main driver class that is the main hotel booking system and number two, the order class. So let's define those things one by one. So let's define the first class and that is the main class of our application and that is the hotel management system which is the core entity of our entire application because with the help of this driver class the user can be able to search a particular hotel and as well as he will be able to book a particular hotel room. So let's define this class called as the hotel management system and since this hotel management system is the heart of our application this class will have the information of all the location where the hotels are available all the rooms and all the hotels that are registered within our application. So what we will be doing here we will be having a map of all the hotels and the corresponding location where it is associated because Whenever a user comes into our application, the first thing what he does is like he gives a location and based on the particular location, he tries to see all the list of hotels available over there. So hotels and the location are the two composite and the primary key for our searching logic. So we should have an hash map like thing where we have all the location and the hotels associated into our application. I hope this is clear to you. The next important thing this hotel management system should have is a list of all the users who have already logged in into our application. So here this will be another list called as the user list. Now within this hotel management system we have to specify few of the primary functionality that we have defined during our function request and that is users should be able to create an account into our application which means that there should be a logic of signing. So here within this class called a hotel management system we will be having a signing mechanism where we will be sending the user detail as our parameter and based on that payload this function will save that user detail into our database. Now the next function requirement is like the user should be able to find the hotel based on the date and the location. So what we have to do we have to write a function over here called as search hotel by location and date. Here we will be passing two parameters and that is the location object where the user want to select the location and along with that the timestamp when he is looking to book the room. So here you can see once the user try to search the hotels by the location and the date what we have to do we have to query this hash map that we have defined over here based on the location that we are passing it from here. So I hope this is clear. So what we are doing based on the location the user is trying to search we are passing this location over here and from this hash map we are getting all the list of hotels associated on that particular location and once we are searching these hotels or the rooms of the hotel we have to also see the status of the room which means the status of the room should be available otherwise if the room is not available the hotel should not come in the search result. Now the next and the final attribute is like once the user select a particular room he should be able to place a booking order over here. And for that what we will be passing, we will be passing in the payload the user detail who is booking a particular room and another entity that is the room booking detail which we will be designing right now. So these are primarily the major attributes or the functionality that we should define within our low level designing architecture. So here you can see based on this logic we can easily fulfill all the requirements that we have specified at the very beginning of our video. Now let's design the last and the final entity class for our low level designing and that is that is this room booking details which will be a simple class consisting of all the details regarding a booking and the details that we need for a particular order of the booking is there should be a unique booking id number two the information of the user who is booking number three the hotel id which he have booked number four the room id which he have selected from the drop down while listing Number five, the date of the booking means the due date as well as the from date means the duration of his booking. And the last but not the least, the payment by which he have made the payment, which means that he can do an online payment or a cash payment. So these are primarily the room details on the receipt for a particular booking so that in the future if the user want to see his all the booking associated with his user, we can list down all the details available into our system. So I hope this is clear and another important functionality that we have to specify over here and that is the notification service. 
which means that once the user is done with this booking, our notification server should send a notification to this user with all this booking detail into his mailbox that your booking has been done successfully. And for this reason, we obviously need another service into our application and that is a notification server. And as I've already told you, this notification service is itself a huge thing to implement. So do not go into the detailed implementation of this notification service because this is out of scope from our low level design. So here you can see how progressively we have subdivided each and every component into different entity class and how we have established the relationship and flow among each other. So I hope this is very clear to you and you can easily explain this entire concept to your interviewer that how we should design the low level architecture of a hotel booking system using the OOPS concept. So the last and the final thing that I want to specify over here is I want to specify the actors. So here you can see all this component will be handled by the operator of the application means entry of the hotel, entry of the room, specification of the address, type of rooms and all these things. And this part of the application will be handled by the user for booking a particular hotel and all this stuff. So I hope this is completely clear to you that how we should create a low level designing of the hotel booking system. And I also hope that you have understand the complete flow of execution that how the user will interact with each and every entity that I have listed over here. Because these are the most important and the primary concept that you have to tell to the interviewer to crack your system designing agent. So hopefully you guys have found this video useful app and if you have liked this video, do not forget to like and share with your friends. And if you are new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So see you in our next video where we will be discussing another important question for technical interview. So see you on our next video. Thank you.